everyone for this opportunity to present a paper titled Vancouver Welcomes You, Minimalist Metonymy Resolution. Uh, by the way, the title of the pa paper is not some kind of joke, it's a, an actual example of metonymy which you will understand probably by slide three. So the talk will be, I'm the first author, my name is Milan, I'm the second year PhD student at um, the beautiful University of Cambridge in beautiful United Kingdom and yeah, delighted to uh, speak about this. Right, so this will be a three-part talk. First one is all about what is the problem, what is metamedia resolution, why is it important, and a quick uh, history of uh, what happened. The middle part will be all about the three contributions. So we have three highlights of this paper. One is a minimalist uh, feature extraction. Second is a minimalist neural net, which processes these features. And then we've got a new data set with a couple of important improvements uh, over the status uh, quo, if you like. And then I'll tell you if this minimalist stuff actually works and a bit of a summary. So what is the problem? So for my PhD, I do a lot of uh, geography. I do uh, geographical information retrieval, which means translating locations into coordinates. And a part of uh, this work in involves this. So you'll be hearing me speak a lot about locations. So instead of giving you a, a dictionary definition of what is a metonymic location, I'll give you an example. Moscow to discuss Ebola risks in West Africa and aluminium and gas trading picked up in Moscow. Now, they may seem to the naive observer as the same entities, same words, but they are definitely not. So the first one, the one in red, is a metonymic example. It does not mean Moscow is the place. It has been substituted into the sentence to mean the, either the people of Moscow or could be Kremlin, could be somebody, but it's most certainly not a location, because locations cannot discuss anything. The second one is something called a literal location, so the green one, something happening in Moscow that is telling you that it is an actual example of a location and you can confidently assign coordinates to it and treat it as a location. But another one, London voted to stay in the EU and London constituency voted to stay in the EU. Once again, they may seem the same, but if you read the context, places don't vote, people vote. So this is something called violation of selection of preferences. So if you read the context and look at what the entity is doing, you, you can find out it, um, exactly uh, whether, whether it's metonymic or literal. If you think this is a trivial problem, uh, metonymy consists, uh, so every fifth location, so this is only for location metonymy, we've done uh, independent sampling from the BNC and from Wikipedia, and one in five locations is metonymic. So this is not trivial at all. So naturally my first port of call was NER to see whether we can use this to uh, uh, detect metonymy. So I've got a selection of six engines, very popular taggers, Google NLP, we've got Illinois NLP, uh, OpenNER, Gate.ac.uk, etc. And I've got 24 examples, six times four, 24 examples of metonymic locations. I deliberately made them very, very easy to detect. These are trivial examples which should be detected easily, but as you can see, out of 24, only three are actually detected by NER. So, NER may claim to understand metonymy, but I, I don't think this is the case, especially not for, uh, as you can see here. So, what else is out there? This is an ultra short history of metonymy. One slide, if you have a look in the paper for the full history. So, Nisim et al. and Market et al. early in 2000, mid 2000s, they started this metonymy uh, resolution. Uh, push not into just locations but co um, other entities like organizations and products. They organized the semi about 2007 shared task, and this is what happened basically, like a one, two, three uh, step. So, you were given a, a series of features by the organizers, then, secondly, you in, uh, went to some time ex extreme lengths to generate your own features. Uh, this was quite expensive. And then in three, you plug these features into your favorite algorithm, no deep learning, uh, and yeah, you have yourself a, a binary classifier. So metonymy resolution, most of the time, is a binary classification task. You can go with higher granular, granularity, but it's too much. So, and in terms of scores, high 85s and semi vowel and a little bit higher, a bit later. But the trouble comes here, so at step two, and virtually all of these approaches use step two, and it's very expensive. Some of the um, tools uh, are very large volumes, lots of data, lots of integration, lexicons, parsing Wikipedia, parsing this, parsing the BNC, 
Uh, it's just very, well, I thought it was very convoluted, very complicated. And it's also task dependent. It is also uh, prepared in advance of the task because you know what you're doing. So I thought it was way too uh, complicated. So I thought, let's try something more minimalist. So the first uh, highlight of the paper is features. We need some features, we need to extract some features. So this is pre-win. Let me explain that this is the feature extraction method. So we have a sentence here. UK with a majority vote of nearly 52% ruling decided to leave the EU, unfortunately. So we've got uh, target entity is UK. And the way pre-win works is that um, you're, you're looking for selection of preferences. And the way to get at its selection of preferences is to follow the head dependency. So if you look at the UK, tra trace the dependency to decided. But this, now this has been used in previous approaches, but they didn't go far enough. It's not enough to just capture one word. So we thought, well, just extend it by a few more words and take the next four. And that gives you a, a window of five. You also save the labels, and that is all of your features. You ignore the rest of the sentence, nothing else needs to be done. So just to recap, Find your so dependency part of the sentence, find the head dependency, and then just take the next four words. I will show you in the results of why it is four, why not ten, or fifty, or one. We're comparing this to the what you might consider traditional baselines. So if, if you're trying to um, <coughs> classify anything in the middle, you, it's, it's quite popular to take the next five, ten, either side, and fifty pounds. So this kind of window approach is very popular. So we're comparing this to pre-win to see how it fares. Once you have some features, you plug this into a minimalist neural model. I like Keras because Keras is in itself minimalist. And so we've got input on the right. You, could, you only ever have input on the right or on the left. I want to focus your attention to the numbers. So embedding is only five, so 50 dimensions. The one hot encoded labels only, you know, we've got um, the dense layer is 15 units, one five. LSCM, one, one five, once again, so very small. Hidden layers, 10 units. So it's pretty much as, as minimalist as it can get. Trains in about one minute. Now, the third highlight is a new uh, data set. There aren't quite as many data sets in this domain. Probably not the most popular task, but there aren't enough. So, we came up with a brand new one. It's called Reloca, Relocation Retrieval, which means it's the distinction between literal and metonymic. So, it is based on Wikipedia. It's quite small, 1,000, 1,000, train and test partition. Uh, but there are two very important differences uh, compared to Semivar, which you know, we also use Semivar as our evaluation. But it's got two advantages. One is it's a mixed, so it's a balanced data set. The so Semivar is very heavily skewed to one class. It has 80% uh, literal and 20% metonymic. So it gives you a very high baseline. And when you train a, any machine learning model, it gives you a, a biased model, which kind of defaults to one uh, class. But the, the second difference is much, much bigger. So this is an image that you might want to uh, feasibly see in, on a website or in a newspaper. We've got three people in it, and it says, Germany, US, and France talk climate science. Uh, now, if you throw this into an NER tagger, what will happen is this will happen. You will think that uh, it will give you yeah, of coordinates for Trump or something. So, obviously, this is completely wrong. I discussed this with our linguists, who actually taught me much about linguistics, much more. I thought I knew something about linguistics until I met people who do this for a living. <laughs> so, obviously, this is completely wrong. So, this was a change in annotation guidelines. So, we've, because previously at Semival and NER, which claims to understand context, I disagree because it doesn't, this would be labeled a location, but clearly there is no location in this uh, picture. So that's why it's important. Right, so three highlights, results. So we've got minimalist, all this minimalist stuff, does it work? So the state of the art on Semival is 86.2. Now we didn't quite get there. So we, on the single model is 83.1, on uh, ensemble was 84.6, not quite there. Actually, I was playing with the code for the past month and I got slightly higher figures, so maybe we're being a little bit humble. I think you, when it comes to replicating, you definitely get some slightly higher numbers. So we didn't get to this state of the art, but it's better than the baselines. As you can see, the blue columns, um, so these are the, what you might consider um, greedy approaches. And on the reload card, similar performance, very similar. Once again, the baselines. 
quite greedy, they take many, many words, but with pre-win, if you choose your features, your window intelligently, you can do more with less. And you know, this is the uh, takeaway from the paper, do more with less, you know, less waste. And then we've got uh, two more graphs here. So these are the six independent trials. On GitHub, if you come to investigate these, have a look on GitHub, you will see um, there are three train and two test partitions. That gives you six combinations of independent trials. And you can see in every trial, we uh, pre-win is better, not astronomically better, it's, this is probably about 2% on average, but once again, you can throw away much, uh, many assumptions, uh, features, you can throw away context, complexity, and still you can do better. Now, I promised you I would explain pre-win, why is it five? So the top line, the blue line, as you can see, peaks at five. So this is, uh, I also uploaded a Connell development set, it's on GitHub, it's unofficial, it's not, so it's mentioned in the paper, but it's kind of unofficial um, because it's got some you know, issues. <laughs> so number five is what was the best performance for pre-win. As you can see, the two lines underneath are the evaluation um, scores. They very closely mirror the performance. The interesting thing is that you could go even simpler. You could go even smaller with pre-win. As I said, it's uh, window five, but you could go three and but you know the performance would suffer by about two percent so you could still get something workable even with fewer features so you could simplify this further and still get relatively good performance science replication we take this extraordinarily seriously it's all available on github and all over the internet just do a google search and you'll find multiple repositories all the instructions it's all there something i personally care very deeply about this issue but i haven't got time to talk about it Summary, so three things you must remember uh, before you walk away from the ACL, three things you must remember. Reloca, brand new data set, so not enough data in this domain. So two very good improvements over the standard uh, cellular data. Then we've got the minimalist feature extraction method, works very well with five, reduced complexity with a new neural net, um, no prior assumptions, no task dependence, just uh, simplify, simplify, simplify. We've seen, unfortunately, this, this is a pet peeve of mine. NER does not understand metonymy and doesn't really understand much context because just because it looks like a location, just because it looks like London, doesn't mean it's a location, it could be something else. So I think there's a bit of an issue with NER context understanding. Metonymy, there, as I, I've only covered locations, and, uh, but there are orgs, products, other instances. Once you uh, learn about metonymy, you will start seeing it everywhere. Small data, small models can and do work, as I said, you can drastically simplify your uh, features and uh, computer computational power and it still works very well. So I want to thank you all for this opportunity to present this uh, paper. I want to especially thank my sponsor. I know this is not very usual, I know many people don't uh, shout out about their uh, doctoral training centre, but I just want to uh, Shout to the world that I'm a very big fan of my centre because they pay a lot of money for me to be here. So thank, thank you for your money dream and thank you all for your attention. I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, we have immediately one question. Precisely annotated as a person or something else, but yeah. That's the next project. <laughs> yeah, that's the next one, yeah. Um, 
Stephanie Strassel from the Student Data Consortium. I'm wondering how the approach that you've taken with annotation and with your data compares to the approach that was taken in the ACE program, um, where autonomy was directly modeled in the annotation guidelines and part of the evaluation framework was included detection of the intended and actual type rather than the surface type. Um, so Washington announced with the organization because it's referring to the government, not the location, uh, not the GP. Thank you. I'm not entirely familiar with the ACE annotation scheme. So in semi-mile 4, for this task, semi-mile they annotated, um, yeah, they, did, they actually realized that government was not a location. They, Acknowledge this. So, if you read the literature for the data set, they acknowledge that it is not a uh, the government or a nation or a head of state is not a location. But they still went ahead and, and annotated it like this. I can't really comment on ACE. I'm not familiar with it. But they did mention in the paper people from Semival that I believe it was ACE who also acknowledged that what you said. I, I believe that, that government is not a location. But for some reason they disregarded this info and still went. And annotated it as a location for some reason. I hope this helps. <laughs> Any other question? <laughs> in the meantime, I have a question. Yeah. So, are you minimalist also in pre training or you do some pre training? Uh, there is no pre training. We use glove embeddings from uh, Stanford to initialize it, it works quite well. Just to initialize, there's, there's really not very much training data. This is, we're talking thousands, just thousands of data sets. So we, the only, yeah, there's no tuning to any data set. There's not for the extraction method, not for the model. The only thing we do is we plug in some embeddings just to improve performance, and that, that's pretty much it. And the other question is that, uh, I, I don't know very well the, the data set approach, uh, let's say, adaptable, so you can change domain uh, training in one domain testing a dif quite different domain. Which particular domain? In general, maybe, you know, if, uh, you, if you pass to uh, newspaper, to medical domain, you are going to lose a lot. So there are several levels. From I, I think the only adjustment you would make is you'd get more training data from the domain. There's, I don't think there's the model or the method needs to be adjusted. The only adjustment might be you get some more uh, training data from the domain. So if you're doing news, maybe get some news data. It just needs to retrain the model, but I've not made any changes. I actually wanted to make it really flexible and have no assumptions whatsoever. So it just throws some more data at it, retrain, and it should work. I don't know, the code is on GitHub, so have a look. Okay, let's thank the speaker again.